Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out The Floor is Jelly, a platformer by Ian Snyder with music by Disaster Piece, who you probably know uh, did the Fez and Shoot Many Robots soundtracks as well as many many others. It's uh, This game is essentially going to ask the question of what would it be like if we were to platform around in a world that was completely made of jelly. It's a very straightforward title actually, uh, with the only exception being that it's not just the floor that is made of this jelly that we mentioned, but the entire world. Uh, so we're going to check out the options real quick and then we're going to get right into things. Uh, not a whole lot to see in the options menu, pretty straightforward stuff actually involving volume, full screen, and deleting save data. And I should mention for anyone who has trouble with epilepsy or flashing colors, the uh, introduction of this is a little bit on that end. But it is only just for a moment, so maybe skip forward like 30 seconds and you should get right past that. So let's give it a try. So the world opens up with us as this little blob here, and I guess we are sort of the embodiment of the jelly. Uh, so we must collect these little points on each corner of the screen, which I'm sort of likening in my head to something like, uh, you know, pills or, or rather the little nuggets from Pac-Man or something. And that creates a amazing confluence of beautiful colors to hit the screen, all of which start spiraling around in circles and ultimately form the world that we'll be spending our time in. Now, what is this game essentially about? It's a very simple concept uh, from everything I've seen of it. We're going to be taking uh, this main character here who looks like a little pair of pants, essentially. Just a little guy, a little ghostly guy, uh, through a whole bunch of different uh, scenarios, different puzzles, worth of different ways to manipulate the floor and walls and everything being made out of jelly. Uh, each one of these windows is what transforms the world into the next area, basically takes us through from one scene to the next. So they're sort of like the, uh, the beginning and the end of each level. Uh, only for some reason you can actually, you can go back. I'm not sure if there's maybe a point later in the game where it opens up a little bit and allows us to be able to, uh, you know, go in and out of different uh, points, and maybe there's actually, like, some Metroidvania elements to it, or the fact that we have to explore a little bit. But for the most part, the beginning of the game seems fairly linear, uh, and really is all just about taking in uh, the beautiful colors, trying to get acclimated to what it's like having everything you touch bounce and jiggle and squiggle around. It's a very strange concept, but it feels so right. Uh, and it's kind of cool that our character also is so small, uh, because it really lets you be sort of sucked into the world around you, and just one little ripple all of a sudden has a pretty meaningful difference uh, for your character, as well as if you notice all those beautiful particle effects in the background. A uh, very calming and serene soundtrack that goes very nicely with it. Uh, and as we progress further into the game, you'll see a whole different variety of different types of ways that things happen, uh, including later on we'll find some water levels, uh, there will be changes of colors and theme, and things will just start to get a little bit more complex, which is kind of what you would hope out of any platformer, of course. Uh, now the version I'm playing is a not a final version, but it should be very close to final, so uh, just disregard the frame rate counter and the memory consumption thing in the corner there. Should be a very similar experience, though, to what you're seeing when you get the final version in your hands, like the day after this video should be going up. And of course I will be including uh, purchase links and everything, I'm just not going to be able to put them up the day this video is up, so uh, just come back again the next day, it should be there. Or if you discover this in the future. So these spiky chunks, these columns, as you'd probably imagine, will kill our character. Not too big of a deal, thankfully we uh, respawn at each checkpoint. And we can actually, if we have a good leap, we can go right over the whole thing. I should probably be uh, trying to zoom through these levels a little bit faster so you can see some of the cool stuff later on. And uh, really the whole beginning is all about trying to understand, you know, how do we get the most bounce out of each one of these levels? And also just kind of having fun and playing around with the environment is also kind of a big element. You can actually do some uh, wall jumps, wall dashes, up things. So if you find yourself in a position where there's a large vertical face, you should be able to get right up that no problem. And this is an example of a place that's kind of testing your ability to do such a thing. And then we'll just continue on. This world seems to be all encased in jelly, which is uh, not really too big of a problem. In fact, the more jelly, the better for our main character here. I have noticed that to be a bit of an issue. A lot of the time when I'll come out of uh, one of these windowsills, I find myself uh, going right back into it again, which is probably not ideal. Uh, but still, you know, can be generally avoided by just moving after you get out. Sort of looks a bit like Mario pipes or something here that we're climbing up, just blue versions of them. And uh, it, it's interesting that this was uh, an action script game too, and it, it reminds me so much of... Windowsill, 
which is another beautiful, beautiful game that I highly recommend you check out if you haven't already. More definitely a puzzle game. Uh, this one is definitely a platformer, so you know, don't get confused there or anything, but it's, uh, they both have a similar graphical aesthetic to me. Uh, they're very, you know, smooth and silky and very, uh, animated in their delivery. Uh, let's just jump. Oh, can we? Yeah, we actually jump straight through that. Beautiful. Character actually reminds me a little bit of a flea, too, which is kind of interesting, because I guess that kind of gives him extra jumping power. Uh, and then it sort of makes you question the scale of everything, right? Since the trees are, like, I don't know, two times the size of your character. Um, maybe they're just tiny little plants or something. So I need to actually use the uh, wiggliness of the world to get around this spiky pillar. And the best way to get a big chunk of it to break down and let me through is to actually get a really nice jump. And then that should let me right past. So now I just need one big long jump across there, and we actually find ourselves going to... Oh, I've fallen off the edge. I didn't even realize there was an edge there. Uh, we find ourselves going to this phone booth, and some birds magically come out of the ground or something. And this should be what takes us on to the next area. And you'll notice things get much more mysterious here. Uh, not definitely like anything dark or so much melancholy, but sort of like when you go through a, a pipe into the, the darker worlds in Mario or something. Things definitely get a different tone to them. And I really, really like these uh, sort of surreal-looking plants that seem to be lighting up and fading at different levels. As well as these little frogs down here causing things to jiggle and wiggle on their own, too. Uh, and it seems like, yeah, I think you can actually cause them to jump around when you get near them, which is kind of nice. You know, the, the little bit of environmental interactivity definitely goes a long way uh, when the game's as pretty as this. And uh, in general, I find also the controls work really well. I haven't had any issues with that. There are a few levels where maybe I feel the level design might not necessarily complement uh, what we're trying to do to the best degree, but they're also, you know, kind of necessary in a way to mix up what's been going on in this. So here's a thing that I'm not 100% sure on. There's actually... There's a windowsill up here that we can take to go to an area, or, if we feel like it, we can actually go up this little path up to the right, and this should also take us to a different windowsill, or at least I assume to be a different one. I've only gone through this way. Uh, and I think one of the issues that I've had, and this is probably like one of the best issues that you can ever have when I'm playing an Indie Impressions game, is when I was trying to get my sound check, I found that I was so engrossed in seeing where I was going and what I was doing that I didn't even want to stop playing it. Uh, to go ahead and do the video, which, you know, that's, I don't know, I think that's kind of good. It was awfully fast to get addicted to it, so uh, this is one that I'll most likely be playing all the way through, although I'm not quite sure to the length of it. I would hope it's nice and long, but, you know, it's tough to say until I finish uh, playing through all of what's here. I'm having a little trouble climbing up this side here for some reason. I guess if you hit a bunch of bad jumps... Uh, you'll notice all of a sudden, you know, your movement is very constrained, and you might find yourself making a bunch of mistakes past that. All right, so here we go. Another phone booth or elevator. And this one takes us to a beautiful pink world where we have uh, some water also playing a part. Now, the water's deal is that it essentially acts like a reverse gravitational pull. So whenever we're under the water, because I guess we're so small, uh, the water tends to propel us towards the surface. And in most cases, that will actually let us uh, jump out to a higher degree. So let's see if we can get on to the next one. And then we'll start seeing some puzzles that involve uh, incredibly interesting use of the water, we'll say. Let's see if I can uh, if I can push myself off of this. I should be able to get a bit deeper. Actually, probably better to be over here. I'm riding the surface of the waves, which is kind of a bad thing, uh, because it tends to leave me in the same position each time. All right, what can I do about this one? Uh-oh. Can I ride? Oh, there we go. I needed to bounce a little bit into the ceiling. There we go. I needed a good kickoff, and then I was able to get back in. So the thing about the water is the further up you start, the further down you're going to end up, and that means you're going to get a bigger uh, jump back on the rebound. Now, I think there's a few ways you might be able to solve this if you're good enough at making these jumps happen. You'll probably be able to uh, use the bottom here to propel yourself up, and then you can go up and around. There's actually, wow, another windowsill up here that I didn't even notice. So I guess there's a few branching paths as well to this, uh, which is pretty awesome, and I really like the way that house uh, just sort of stripped away to let you see inside. Oh, what is this? We've got... There's a whole little menu here. I didn't even find this when I was playing before. Uh, look, inventory, web... I'm not actually sure what that is 100%, but I think that's uh, kind of mysterious and awesome that it's there. So maybe something to investigate a bit later. Is there anything else uh, to see in this this area? No, I think that might be all there is. So this is uh, an extra little 
Easter egg, perhaps, or something else that takes us into an entirely different uh, realm of possibilities, and I'm very curious as to what exactly that is. Okay, so we're going to bounce around here, and there's another windowsill down here. And now we're going to get to a little bit more difficult stuff. As you'll see, we've got a lot of spikes happening, and this involves slightly more accurate jumping. We're going to have to find a way uh, to get around this successfully. So a big jump, very likely necessary. And the other way I could have done this too is to jump around the back of this uh, block and then try and come up from the other side. But that's most likely just going to result in the same issue, uh, just trying to get higher up into the air. Now, what's the deal with this one? All right, so we want to get as high as possible from here, try and get around that edge. And then we should get a nice big jump off, which is going to allow us to go up from the top. Uh, if I don't quite make it, then I might have to get a bigger jump while we're underwater and use this. Yeah, there we go. Elasticity will let us get a bigger one from that. All right, so now... Oh, we've got to find a way through here. And I think I need to get down in uh, between these two points, and I'm not sure exactly quite how to do this. Alright, I guess that's one way to do it. Alright, so we'll bounce up here, and I think we should be able to fall down into the center, and that should allow us to kind of lock in our progress. And there we go, we can bounce over to the other side. Okay, now let's see if we can get through this little narrow channel. Uh, this is sort of an area where I think you could probably make quite a few jumping mistakes. If you end up sort of on the wrong, like, off-kilter in your bounces, I think you could end up sort of bouncing right into the window a bunch of ba uh, more times before you get out of here. I guess you don't want to use that corner, uh, but we're actually doing some reverse wall jumps. And now I want to actually try and bounce off of here. There we go. That'll let us get up. Now, how do I get into that window? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think it's too far down for me to try and bounce through the ground. I wonder if I'm really skilled if I could, like, bounce through this tiny little crack into the other side. I don't think that's probably possible. Oh, that was strange. I sort of clipped up through the top of things. Maybe you want to jump from off of here. There we go. That'll work. And you kind of get the idea, I think, probably from what I've shown you so far. It definitely has a, uh, a little bit of, like, a hardcore appeal to it in the way that the platforming works, but it's not all uh, overly difficult either. You know, although it feels a little bit inspired by things like Super Meat Boy in a rather simplistic and, like, right-to-the-point level design, uh, it's definitely not quite as difficult in what I've seen so far. And I think there's definitely quite a bit of latitude for both levels of gameplay. And I think this time I'm supposed to be jumping up these outer edges really love these little fish patterns, too, they're creating. There's so much attention to detail in this. You know, between the lovely color palette, uh, the, the great music, the particle effects, uh, the way the physics work on such a granular level, it's all really pretty and really fun to interact with. And I think that's what's going to really go a long way to making the floor is jelly, uh, something that I think a lot of people are going to want to play. It's just really, it's fun to play around with. And I know on a, a very basic level, that seems like, well, yeah, sure, it's a video game. Of course, it's going to be fun to play around with. Uh, but when your base most, you know, interactive element of the game being the landscape around you at all times uh, is extremely fun to play around with, I think that's going to lend itself to being uh, even more playable. And in moments of possible frustration, if it ever does get that hard, uh, then I think people are much more willing to kind of look past those difficulties and keep on uh, to see how far they're going to make it, just because they're curious to see where the uh, the landscapes and the environment are going to go, and what other, what other ways you could iterate on a concept such as this. So all in all, Floor is Jelly, huge thumbs up. I really enjoyed my time with it. I'm certainly going to be playing it quite a bit more, uh, and I'm very excited to see like how long the game is, how much there is to see in it in total, and what other ways uh, the developer chooses to make this all work out as you know a platformer in general. So, again, links are going to be available uh, once they're available. They're not quite yet as the time of this recording, but come back real soon, and they will be. And uh, I'm excited to hear what you guys think about this one, because it's a really good find. It's uh, one of my favorites that I've played in a while. So, despite the fact that I can't quite make this jump, I know I will make it eventually. But uh, I do want to recommend that you all check it out if you can. And, of course, if you don't mind, check out some of my other stuff in my social media uh, links, which are going to be like my Facebook, my Twitch, my Twitter. All of that stuff is going to be right in the description uh, near the purchase links. And, of course, I will have the developer's uh, website as well in there. So feel free to check all that stuff. And be sure to come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. I know I need to jump up the side of that wall, and I just keep messing that up. But I hope to see you back again for a new episode. Like I said, they're up every single day. Let me know your comments. I want to hear what you have to say about this one. Uh, what does the concept of making the floor into jelly do for you and uh, making you excited about playing another platformer? 
because uh, for me, it does way more than I expected it to. So with that, I will bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please continue to leave your support, and I will catch you again tomorrow. Have a lovely night.